Good evening. Welcome back to Nerds of the North. Matthew here. Sorry it's been so long since I got a video back up for you guys, but I'm going to continue on with Star Trek Month. And what I'm going to cover today is I'm going to talk about the different Star Trek seasons. Or series. Sorry, not seasons. I own two of the Star Trek series. I own the original series and I own the next generation. Uh, the next generation, however, as you'll see when you get to it, has not yet been upgraded to Blu-ray. But what I did manage to get my hands on is Star Trek the original series on Blu-ray. When these got announced, I figured, you know what, I'm going to go out and try and I have a local game store that actually had these in stock for rent. So I rented a season to see what it was like, and I was blown away. The images on the back of the cover to show the difference between original and enhanced don't do it justice for what you see. Uh, here, let's see if you can see this. See the uh, pictures here on the back? How that was the original? And look at how different it is now in the enhanced version. Now you get both original option for video and the enhanced option for video which means you're also getting the original mono cast sound as well as the new enhanced is it 7 point? Yeah, the Dolby 7.1 sound. These I've watched all three series or all three seasons, and it's great. There's a lot of episodes that I hadn't seen originally growing up. Uh, primarily a lot of the third season I didn't see. Uh, I recognized a couple episodes as soon as they came on the air for uh, the gangster episode I recognized. Um, the episode where you have the actress who plays... Dr. Pulaski in Next Generation, I recognize that one, and of course I recognize the Tribble episode, who, who doesn't recognize that one. Overall, I'm really happy with this with these purchases. Uh, they're, you can find them for a relatively decent price, but they are Star Trek and they are complete seasons, they're not going to be as inexpensive as you would think they would be. So you're going to put out a little bit of money for them, but they're worth it. Special features you get, there's a whole lot of behind the scenes stuff, there's production logs, production footage. The ability to switch with uh, on my PlayStation, it's actually called an angle button. But I can switch between original and enhanced with the press of a button. And that's good if you want to see the subtle difference, like the subtle, I say, the major differences between um, each season and each episode as you're watching it. Uh, here's, a, well, here's a prime example of the difference. Look at the difference in phaser quality here. Alright, original. Enhanced. Much better phaser quality that you see. You'll notice, I don't... Is it just because Season 3 is shorter than Season 1 and 2, but they're Season 1. They're Season 2. Now both of these sets are 7 disc sets. Here's Season 3. Like, what did what you do here? Season 3 is 6 discs. I don't know why the packaging is such a different size for Season 3. Did they come up with a new fancy way of laying the Blu-rays in it? Not that I'm aware of, it's just they're stacked two on two. One up, one down, set up like that. Nothing innovative, but they just look weird sitting on a shelf now. I don't know, I'm kind of picky about how they look when I'm sitting on a shelf, because I like to have them all out and display. 
Um, if you're a Star Trek fan, you've probably already owned the original series. If you're questioning whether or not you'd like to upgrade your original series off the DVDs to the Blu-ray, I say go for it. You're not going to be disappointed in the quality of the Blu-ray, and you're still going to get the original version from the DVD. So it's, as it says on the back of these boxes, it's the best of both worlds. So that's the original series. Not really too much to say about it. It's good. I do really enjoy the original series. But it's not the Star Trek I grew up on. I'm sorry. I was born after this series had been aired. I am a child of the next generation. And I shall talk about them next. Star Trek. The Next Generation. For the entire length of this show's runtime on television, this was the time when my family got together. I don't believe my sister truly enjoyed the show. In fact, I think she always left and went to do something else. She might have watched some of it, but my dad, my mom, and myself we loved The Next Generation. I've seen every episode of it repeatedly. I loved the Space Channel back in the day when they would play four hours straight of Star Trek. It was the greatest channel in the world. <laughs> Even Spike TV, when they would run three consecutive hours of Next Gen and then give us some Voyager. I truly enjoyed that. So, when I was... So when I got into the job market and started working, I saw these big old collector boxes. Now this here is season one. How nice and pretty this looks. And when you open it up, still very nice and pretty. Now you got, bam, there's a table of contents right on the inside cover. So you already know where to look without having to pull this bad boy open. And when you get this bad boy open, they haven't been opened in a while. I have the discs in a binder. Come on out, you! Oh, well, it's, as you can see, it's your standard fold-out jewel. These seasons, these were not cheap when I bought them. They were not cheap at all. Uh, this is the biggest investment I've ever put into one specific show. I'm holding episode, I'm holding series one, or season one, of The Next Generation. This cost $169. I'm well aware you can get them cheaper now. And unfortunately now I'm looking at the big old slap to the face that is the Blu-ray releases. Because the Blu-ray releases look really, really, really good. I bought the Star Trek to the next level disc. And even just watching Farpoint State, Encounter at Farpoint, sorry. Even just watching Encounter at Farpoint. The detail on the Enterprise blows my mind. It's a complete and utter jaw-dropper. The sound is outstanding. The video quality is unbelievable. And this is the original negative. They just had a better scanning technology for it now. I am really, really, really tempted to pick them up on Blu-ray. But my problem is, the amount of money I've invested in these, do I really want to invest that extra money into the Blu-ray? What I've currently decided to do is they are on the please buy me for Christmas and birthday list. So that's all that I ask for. I might get them, I might not. You know what, the entire series isn't even out yet. Um, season 6, I believe, comes out in November. 
So I've got a little bit of time until all of them are out. And you know once all of them are out, they're going to come packaged together in a big old buy all seven at once. So at that point, I'll probably look at to getting the Blu-ray. I know they're going to be worth it. I've seen from that sample disc what it's going to be like. And it's unbelievable. Uh, up around here, when um, each new season comes out onto Blu-ray, the week before it comes out, because these all get all Blu-rays come out on a Tuesday, so the week before it comes out on the Tuesday and the Thursday, the local movie theater shows one episode or two episodes, depending on which episodes they pick, from that season. That in the whole Blu-ray redone format. And I haven't gone to see any of them yet. I really wanted to, but kind of conflicts with my work hours. The moment that I hear that if they decide to show all good things, I am taking that day off of work, I am going to the theater, I am watching all good things. Easily the best series and season finale I have ever seen all good things deserves to be seen on the big screen and I can't wait to see it on the big screen so here we have the next generation I'll show you or I'll see if I can show you what this set looks like when you get it all together I don't know if my camera's gonna be able to pick it up here Give me a moment. Okay. You ready for this? Bum, ba bum, bum. There it is. That is my next generation collection. Not the crappy green plastic box with the discs all stored on plastic sleeves or paper sleeves, sorry, this is the real thing, and uh, you can tell they've been sitting on a shelf for a little while because I keep the discs in a binder, in fact, uh, it's this bad boy right here, this holds all, that holds all my television on DVD, the one thing that bugs me about this set, ugh, I don't need to have all of them out here to do this, and they're falling on the floor, one thing that bugs me about this is, Aside from, in some cases, like season four here, see this? It came with a little wrap around, just so you could see all the special feature information so you'd know if you want to buy it or not. The glue that they used on my copy of the fourth season, I swear is super glue, because it doesn't come off. It tore the paper off. Now, I got season 4 and season 5 at the same time. Look, it's perfectly clean. What happened here? Did somebody, uh, did somebody hit me up with super glue? Is that what happened? Ugh, been pranked by a lonely DVD packager. But you'll see, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera very well. Anyway, you see how the, how the box here is done? This little inserting groove? So it always opens like a front cover and it just has a little bit of an overlay. You know, you make season one, two, three, four, five, and six all look like that. But when you come around to season seven, why did you change why did why did you change it? Like this is a little flappy insert and you tried to mimic the borderline. Why'd you change it? Why'd you have to do that? It just seems unnecessary to me, you know? If you're going to change the packaging, do it at like season two, and then go back and change the packaging for season one. Don't change the packaging on the one final season. Because you know we're going to have to buy it. We had to buy this. It was the last one. You're not going to have an incomplete collection when all that you're missing is one. <sighs> that bugs me. Oh well. Since Star Trek The Next Generation is easily 
beyond a shadow of a doubt, my favorite Star Trek series of all. I'm going to go through each season one by one, and I'm going to tell you what my favorite episodes are out of each season. Okay. Season one. The beginning of it all. What stands out at me, I'm just looking, reading the uh, table of contents here. 19 hours and 43 minutes. That's the length of season one. And if everything's about on par, two, four, six, eight, that's, that's a lot of minutes and a lot of hours of footage. So, my favorite episodes from season one. Encounter at Farpoint is outstanding. It was the pilot. They had to throw everything they had at it because you want... That's the entire point of your pilot. You give it your all. You show the studios what you can do. And you try and pull the ratings from the very beginning. Had they not done Encounter at Farpoint as well as they did, and I understand it was originally two story... Two, like one separate story and then another separate story that Roddenberry had to f somehow weave together. I understand that. They explain that actually in the special features of this season. But wow. Encounter at Farpoint was amazing. Um, I'll get it off my chest right now. I love the villain of Q. What, any episode that I'm watching, the moment you see the... Mon Capitan! You know you're in for a good episode. There's, I don't think there's been a bad Q episode yet. The only one to me that was slightly pushing the border is when you find uh, the girl who they pick up off of a planet and she's got the powers of a Q because her parents were Q and Continuum decided they had to end her parents. So I said encounter at Farpoint. Um... Hide and Q isn't too bad. The Big Goodbye. The Big Goodbye is a great one. Uh, Arsenal of Freedom, I always remember. It's the one with um, the planet that uh, is set up for weapons sales. So you can come in, view the weapon, and whether or not you wish to buy it. It's not... like those, those are probably my three favorite episodes out of the series. Uh, I don't particularly like... What's the name of it? Skin of Evil. It's, everybody knows the episode Skin of Evil. It's the episode where Denise Crosby dies. Or Tasha Yar dies, sorry, not, De, not Denise Crosby. But it's the episode where we lose Yar. It sets up a beautiful scene for the second season, but it's not one of my favorites. It ju it just isn't. I only so those are my three favorite episodes from season one. I'm not always going to have three. I might have more. I might have less, but we'll see how it goes. Moving on to season two. A lot of my friends think that I hate on season two for one reason and one reason only. It's because of the character of Dr. Pulaski. I admit, I'm not that much of a fan of Dr. Pulaski. She's not a horrible character, but, you know, I've, I grew accustomed to Beverly Crusher, and when you change her, you had to get rid of her. I understand the reasoning they had to get rid of her because she was pregnant that season. But Pulaski just didn't quite fit in. So, unfortunately, season two, which is a shorter season, it's only 16 hours, 39 minutes. Season two has a lot of episodes that I just don't like. And I'm going to hear crap from it. I know I am. But 
it's also a season where I have one of my favorite episodes of the entire series. So let's start with the worst. Peak performance. I don't like the Traveler. It, it, he seems like a MacGuffin the series just brought in to, oh, we got to explain something quickly. And the whole thing with Wesley being able to become a Traveler later on down the line. It didn't seem like a very well thought out way of getting Wesley out of the series. I feel they could have done better. Peak performance, it could have been a better episode. Um, pen Pals. Believe me, I understand the point that they were trying to make. I just don't like the episode. I really don't. Uh, the Donfin. Donfin, whatever you want to say. It. No thank you. Just... No. If I'm 100% in my memory, the Dolphin is the episode where there's one of them's a mediator. No. Just, no. Didn't like it. And the child. Worst season opener I've ever seen. I didn't like it. I'm sorry. I'm not hating on Marina Sirtis. I'm not hating on Next Generation. I just did not like that episode at all. If I happen to catch it on TV and it's that episode, I will watch something else. However, my greatest episodes? Q Who. Q Who. Welcome the Borg. This is where the threat came in. And I admit, when I first watched this, this aired 88 and 89. So I was six. I was six years old when I first saw the Borg. And they scared the crap out of me. I That was the most terrifying villain I had ever seen on television. I just, something about the Borg, it just, oh, tingled down the spine when I th remember what I, my impressions of them at that age. But the best episode on this series, on this season, I keep saying series, ugh, best episode on the season has got to be The Measure of a Man. Wow. The trial that pits Riker versus Picard as in the lawyer seats as to is Data property of Starfleet or is Data a creature unto his own right? Wow, that's a deep episode. And I love how Guinan helps Picard out with it at the end. That's... If you talk about the episode too much, you ruin the episode. You have to see it. If there's any episode you watch out of season two, look it up and watch Measure of a Man. Wow. Alright, moving up the line. Moving into season three. A lot of people like season three. I do too. We're back to 19 hours and 40 minutes long. Scrolling down the list here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I can't remember if Deja Q is the episode that I'm thinking of. Um, I I want to think it is, and I'll subtitle it into the video whether it is or not. But one of my favorite episodes with Q, wherever it falls in the series lineup, is the one where Q sends them to be, uh... Oh, what's the term? Into Sherwood Forest and become the Robin Hood? How can you, how can you not laugh when you hear Worf? Captain, I must protest! I am not a merry man! 
I, I fell off the couch laughing. That was so great. But yesterday's Enterprise. That was a nice episode. You got to see Denise Crosby come back for a little bit. I'd like you. You almost saw Mirrorverse, the mirror universe of Star Trek. That was an interesting way to see. Tr did like that episode a lot. Um, I actually enjoyed Tin Man. T I didn't think Tin Man was badly done. I know I. I don't like some of the other dramatized episodes, but. I thought they did a good job on Tin Man. Um, Hollow Pursuits. Hollow Pursuits is pretty funny. Got to admit that. Uh, Sarek. Sarek is... Wow, you want to see an acting performance? Check out Patrick Stewart in the end of Sarek. That was great. And of course, the biggest cliffhanger in Star Trek. Best of Both Worlds Part 1. Had to wait four and a half months for the next episode. And we're left with, off with the line of Mr. Worf, fire. As Riker now attempts to destroy the Borg cube that has Picard, currently Lacutus, on board. Great season! Great ending to a season! Halfway through, folks. We're on to season four. Another 19 hour, 40 minute season. Best of Both Worlds Part 2. You, you end with a cliffhanger, you gotta start with a continuation, and that's really well done. However, Brothers and Family, those were two very deep episodes. And. You know, it was kind of a surprise to see, but they were... I enjoyed them. Aha! There it is. Sorry. It is not Deja Q. The episode is called Cupid. It's here. It's on disc 5. Cupid with, um, when Q decides to become Sherwood of... N or the Sheriff of Nottingham and sets them off on their own. Uh, following, actually, on another a great original Barclay episode, The Nth Degree. That's a good episode. I don't know anybody who doesn't like that episode. Uh, what else we got here? We. This is the season that brings... Um, it actually, I believe it brings Denise Crosby back again, only this time she's playing the Romulan. Um, you know, the, the season finale here is Redemption Part 1. I didn't really like the Romulan-Vulcan storyline. It was a good episode, but it's not one of my favorites. Sorry. It just, it just isn't. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it, it just isn't. What is that one season? I'm sorry, I'm just thinking of an episode. Um, you viewers out there in YouTube land will probably be able to answer this before I search it out myself. It's the episode where Kelsey Grammer plays the captain of the ship, um, and everything's coming out. They're caught in a... Cyclo cyclical loop, and they're always detonating and destroying, and everybody starts getting constant deja vu. It's not deja Q. I don't know. I'll find it at some point. Season 5 now. You know what's really nice, a really complex episode to see? Darmok. Darmok was interesting. Really seeing how they would work that back and forth. I enjoyed it. I really did. Um, I, Borg, you know, it's nice to see that they brought Lore back, uh, made Lore a villain again. So it's not too bad. Uh, but here, here, time zero. 
I didn't like Time Zero. Sorry, it lands in my bad category. I I didn't want, didn't feel it had to be shown that Guinan was actually back on Earth during Mark Twain's time. Samuel Clements, I'm sorry, but it's Mark Twain. Ugh. Yeah, you'll find a lot of my favorite episodes are in the earlier seasons. There is some good seasons in the e in the end episodes, but um, I finally started doing a lot of two parters later on in the series. It works. Uh, here we go. Uh, Rascals is a good episode. It's the episode where uh, everybody gets turned into children. And Fistful of Datas was an interesting episode to watch as well. That's pretty much it. Those are my two favorite episodes out of this. There's good episodes on this lit, like on the season, just... You know, they're not my favorite. Sorry, it's just... They're not. Um, I know I'm missing a good episode. Uh, the Inner Light. I'll find out which season that is in a little bit. But The Inner Light is a good episode as well. In fact, I'm quickly going to check that. One second here. No, not in five. Not in four. Not in three. Could it have been a season one episode? No. Alright, hold on there a minute. Okay, after a quick wiki search, I have found my issue. First of all, I made two mistakes. In season four, when I mentioned um, that the ending episode, Redemption Part 1, that I didn't like it because of the Romulan subplot where they brought back in Spock and everything, I apologize. You can stop screaming at me out there, YouTube. That would actually be the episodes Unification 1 and 2. Redemption is with Worf resigning from the Enterprise to go and fight on behalf of Galron. Those were well done episodes. Uh, I'm much more into the Klingons than I was into the Romulans, sorry. But, uh, yeah, you know, my, my brain only can hold so much information up here, and when I'm doing these videos off the top of my head, I'll make mistakes. Oops, I'm human. Sorry. So, yeah, it's unification that it's not bad, but mm, I could have done without. I like, I... They're okay episodes. I'll watch them. They're not like an ep they're not like the child where I won't watch it at all. But there we go. Now, it's actually in season 5 right before we get to time zero where the inner light is. That's just where the episode was. It's hiding away in season 5. Tucked up right there next to Samuel Clements. No wonder I couldn't find the thing. We talk about True Q, or Season 6? We did talk about Season 6. I just saw a fistful of datas on the cover. Alright, here we are. Quickly chat about the 7th season. 
the last season of the next generation. Pegasus. That was a good episode, and for reasons that I will get into when I talk about the other series. Masks was actually pretty, pretty strange, but I liked the story. I, it was an interesting storyline for it. And everything else in the series just gets blown away by all good things. All good things was outstanding. I have the audio novel. I have the actual novel. And I have it here. And I will watch that episode so much. It's... I truly do enjoy this. Enjoy that episode. It was a good way to finish it. I, they had the Sky Dome full of people dressed up in Star Trek gear when City TV broadcast that episode. And I was so sad to see when it was done. So sad. It was upsetting to see the Next Generation crew leave. But hey, we were promised Deep Space Nine. So I went and I actually recorded, taped off the old VCR on TV to make sure I wouldn't miss the first few episodes. I watched the, f I watched the first three seasons straight. No interruptions. I didn't miss a single episode. So I watched the first three seasons of Deep Space Nine. And it didn't grab me. It didn't. I'm sorry. Yes, Deep Space Nine got good near the end. Yes, the Defiant is an amazing ship. Yes, they brought Worf back. They brought O'Brien over, so it was a little bit of the next-gen crew. Yes, Picard does make an appearance. You see a lot of Cardassians and... Uh, ever, ever since that one episode where Picard gets captured, I think that's actually Chains of Command. Let me look at that here now. Chains of Command, I believe that's a season six episode. Yep. Chains of Command where Captain Jellico is assigned to command the Enterprise while Picard is sent on a covert mission into Cardassian territory. You know, that episode gave me a hatred for the Cardassians, mainly the second one. There are four lights! Really well done episode. I'm not hating on the episode at all. I just, I don't like the Cardassians that much. I guess that's why I don't like Deep Space Nine. I'm sorry. I am probably among the select few, especially among my own group of friends. I am among the select few. In fact, I think I am a, I am a singularity unto my own right. I prefer Star Trek Voyager over Deep Space Nine. Any day of the week. Any episode. I am much more interested in watching Voyager than I am in watching Deep Space Nine. I'm sorry. Yes, Catherine Janeway breaks the Prime Directive so many times it now looks like Swiss cheese. Yes. There's so many other issues with Voyager. I will not even try to defend the season finale, or series finale. That was a rush job. They just, they wanted to find a way to end it where Janeway was back on Earth. 
okay, whatever. But I get I'm more entertained by Voyager than I am by Deep Space Nine. I find I get bored during Deep Space Nine. Yeah, Deep Space Nine had a couple of good episodes. I inf I really like the episode where Odo's trapped in the elevator with Luxana Troy. That's torture for anybody. But you know, it was it was a good character moment for them. I like that. But yeah, there's. I'm sorry, I like Voyager. What's actually really going to condemn me here is the fact that I I actually like Enterprise. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad they stopped Enterprise when they did, because it started to get really stupid. I'm not defending the first few parts of it, either. It, they had a lot of stupidity. The characters were well done, though. Story, dumb. Characters and character interactions, that was well done. That's what kept me into the story, what kept me watching Enterprise. The opening theme song is horrible. Why, for the fifth season of Star fifth series of Star Trek, did you have to go with a lyric song? I don't know. But yeah, those are my opinions. I don't hate on Enterprise. In fact, Enterprise's finale, where they linked it in with the Pegasus episode. I thought that was extremely well done. I watched that live, and I was astonished when I saw it. Very, very, very well done. So, we're coming to, almost coming down to the end of Star Trek month. I've talked about the series, I've talked about the movies. Sorry it's only been two episodes for this month, folks, but... You know, I got side I got a little bit sidetracked because when I started Star Trek Month, I didn't plan on actually having a live radio show for this little uh, YouTube channel as well. So I'll post the link again with this episode, but be there, check us out. Nerds of the North, Wednesday nights, 8.30 to 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, PM of course. And uh, yeah, check us out. 102.7 Chop FM. You can find us online and listen to us through the live stream online. This is your Nerds of the North, Matthew. Live long and prosper.